We've learned a bit about how we can use thermodynamics to uh, learn more about chemical reactions when they're spontaneous and uh, what establishes their equilibrium condition. I want to now turn to a, a very specific application that can show you how this is used uh, in a very different sort of chemical reaction, uh, one that involves transfer of electrons, and how we can actually use this to measure some of these quantities that we've been talking about. So let me start by uh, just saying that a chemical reaction um, you know, it can be defined many different ways, but I want to define it in a very specific way as a rearrangement of valence electrons. And I think um, just about anything that you can call a chemical reaction, you could describe using those words. And, and the whole idea is they're going to rearrange valence electrons to a new stable state. All right. I, I suppose there's lots of ways you can arrange electrons to non-stable states, but if you arrange them to a new stable state, then, then you actually have a beginning and an end to the reaction. Now, there are lots of different ways that chemical reactions can manifest this. I mean, one of the ways, uh, so some possibilities. One of the ways is the one that we're most familiar with, and that is making and breaking new bonds. Okay, so. Um, that might be, you know, sort of indicative of the uh, kind of chemical reaction that we've been talking about up to now. And uh, certainly that does involve an, a rearrangement of uh, valence electrons. But I want to say that another way that we could characterize a chemical reaction is it could be the transfer of electrons from one species to another. So that's the particular kind of chemical reaction I want to talk about in this lesson. And uh, it involves movement of electrons, so it's going to involve movement of charge. Now, these specific kinds of reactions, we also have a name for those. We call them oxidation reduction reactions. And uh, just to uh, clue you in, if you haven't started using this terminology already, chemists often refer to these as redox reactions for short. So it sort of reverses the order of these, but oxidation reduction. Now, one thing that's important to know about oxidation reduction is that they refer to two complementary processes, both of which occur in these kinds of electron transfer interactions. But we often separate them into those two halves. And the way we separate them is the thing that loses electrons we refer to as oxidation. So oxidation is something when you have a loss of one or more electrons. And reduction would be when you have a gain of one or more electrons. So there is a, a very simple mnemonic often taught in general chemistry called oil rig, which basically stands for oxidation is loss and reduction is gain in referring to electrons. So if that helps you to remember which is which, that would be great. Okay, so in order to really get a handle on this, uh, I want you to consider a particular specific example. Now this example turns out to be one of my favorite demonstrations uh, uh, in general chemistry, but it involves a reaction of a solid zinc and a solution that contains silver ions. And what happens is that these undergo an electron transfer that leads to solid silver and zinc ions. Now you'll notice in this thing that my, my, my uh, material balance is balanced. So I have a balanced equation for that, but I do not have a charge balance. So I always need to balance such statements, uh, such reaction uh, equations, by balancing the charge. In order to do that, I would have to add a 2 in front of the two silvers here. Now what's going on here? I mean, if we were to draw this as a... Uh, uh, sort of a diagrammatic of what's happening. I've got zinc sitting out here, and we'll just say that it's got a pair of electrons in its valence shell somewhere. So I'll just sort of draw a loose valence shell here uh, that are ready to be transferred to something else. And I'll have silver over here, and I'm going to need two of them. And each of these silvers has sort of an empty space where it can accept an electron. And so what's happening in this process is that I'm transferring electrons from the zinc to the silver, like this. 
And um, this is, of course, overly simplistic. <laughs> I'm sure the real process uh, using real zinc and silver atoms is somewhat more complicated. But this gives you an idea of sort of what's going on in this process. And that does represent a reaction because both of these species have, in essence, changed their chemical identities. Now, one of the things you might ask is what causes this to happen? And I want to say that there's basically two different perspectives. Okay, one would be what I'll call the thermodynamic perspective. And the other would be sort of the electromagnetic perspective. Okay, whenever we have electrons moving from one place to another, that's a movement of charge. And so we think of that as being electricity. All right, so there is an electromagnetic way of thinking of this, which would basically say that uh, there is an electric potential that exists between two, uh, two ends of a wire. And across that electric potential, which is denoted by volts, okay, um, there is a driving force that causes charge to move across that wire. All right, in the thermodynamic case, though, we know that reactions happen because of a chemical potential. And we've even uh, given that a symbol, right? We call that mu. And uh, that involves, uh, you know, finding the minimum of the Gibbs energy, basically, in order to drive a reaction from one side to the other. So when we unite these two, and that's what we're going to be doing in this lesson and, uh, and in general, um, what we're talking about is something called an electrochemical process. It is a reaction, but it is a reaction that involves the movement of electrons and therefore can generate electricity. All right, now it's fair to ask at this point, how can we do this? I mean, if I just set these things up in a beaker, you know, to do this reaction that I've drawn up here, um, those electrons would move and, you know, you wouldn't even tell the difference maybe, except that you would see silver, silver appearing, which actually is, kind of, that's why it's kind of a spectacular demonstration. Uh, you'll see silver appearing, but uh, you wouldn't see any electricity that you could harness. And so the whole idea is we want to know how we can isolate the movement of the electrons and study it basically by studying that movement of electrons. All right, now the way we do this, I'm going to try to draw this very carefully, but you, we're going to create two beakers or two vats that contain a piece of this reaction. Okay, so in other words, I'm going to separate the pieces of this reaction. All right, now I'm probably going to have to erase the piece that I've just drawn here, this electrochemical process, because I'm going to need that space to, to draw in. But in these, two, uh, in these two beakers, I'm going to have, you know, some solution. And I'm going to stick an electrode in each, and I'm going to color those electrodes like so. I'm going to have one electrode over here which is just a piece of metal, and one over here. And the whole idea is that I want to separate the zinc side from the silver side. So this is how I want to isolate the, this reaction. If I do that, then it's possible that I might be able to connect a wire from one side to the other and detect the flow of electrons along this wire. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and label these things. So this is my zinc uh, piece of metal, and this is my silver piece of metal. And I could set this up, hook it up with a wire, and nothing would happen. All right, there would be no electricity. So let's just, uh, let's just say no electricity unless we add other features. So... I'll just leave it at that. No electricity without other features. So what other features could we add? Well, um, you'll notice that I've got zinc ions appearing over here and silver ions over here. And the logical place might be to put zinc ions in here and silver ions in here. And if I do that, still nothing happens. Okay, so um, basically what I've done is I've added ions to the solutions. and that has not resulted in any electron transfer. Okay, so what else can I do? Well, one other thing that we need to take account of is when electrons travel along the wire, they're moving charge. 
So if I start moving charge from, say, this side over to this side, I'm going to build up electric charge, I'm going to build up negative charge over here, and I'm going to build up positive charge over here. And there's only so far that nature will allow me to do that before it stops because it doesn't want to generate, you know, large charge separation. So one way I can circumvent that is to create something called a salt bridge. And it's basically, uh, a, oops, not drawing this very well. It's basically uh, it's containing, it contains a substance that will allow ions to move back and forth, but they're not ions that participate in this reaction. So the typical uh, constitution is KCl in agar to constitute this salt bridge. And so uh, potassium ions and chloride ions can move back and forth, and they will balance the charge, and they will allow uh, this charge to build up on either side. Well, it doesn't build up because it gets replaced, but they will allow electrons to move across the wire. And when we do this, we get electricity. Okay, so what we've done here is we have basically set up an electrochemical cell. And this electrochemical cell separates the two parts of the reaction, the zinc part and the silver part. And by adding a salt bridge to uh, maintain charge, uh, basically charge zero on both sides, uh, we can facilitate now the movement of electrons. And I'll tell you that the electrons do move in the direction I have indicated here. They move from left to right. Now, on this side, on the zinc side, where we've got zinc uh, going from zinc solid to zinc 2 plus, that is clearly a loss of electrons. So this is the oxidation side. And on the other side, we have the reduction side, on the silver side. Okay, so um, in this oxidation side, we have a name for this half cell. Okay, these two things that I've drawn here are half cells. And they represent electrodes. These metal pieces that are sticking in this solution are called electrodes. This particular electrode that constitutes oxidation is called the anode. And the one that uh, covers reduction is called the cathode. So please note that in an electrochemical cell, we always have movement from the anode to the cathode of electrons. Anode to cathode. This is the direction that the electrons flow. All right. Another convention that we often use in these cases is we set it up so that electrons flow from left to right. So I'm going to call that left to right. Uh, and we uh, use that very specific order. Now, one last thing that I want to note is that this particular half cell for the zinc, we might write as zinc with zinc ions. And we might write the half cell for the silver as silver ions and silver. Now, the ordering that I've used here indicates whether it's oxidation or reduction. Zinc is going from solid, uh, solid metal to zinc ions. Silver is going from silver ions to silver metal. All right, so when you see the ion on the right, right of, the, uh, of the parent metal, this represents an oxidation. When you see it on the left of the parent metal, then it's a reduction. When we put these two together, we can denote what exactly is happening in this electrochemical cell. And we would write it like this. All right, so this is a way that we have. It's called a cell diagram. It's a way that we have of denoting this particular electrochemical cell, made up of zinc and of silver, and separated by a salt bridge in the middle, which is denoted by those two vertical lines.